Welcome guys to a video by Fast Enough. My name is Blaze. We're gonna be doing some tweaks today with the Rostec uh, micro can or the hex can. Um, this version is gonna give you the ability to make a lot of uh, customizations to your Volkswagen or Audi uh, without having to, you know, go to a dealer, pay somebody, something like that. This part's gonna cost you about two, three hundred dollars depending on what you get. Uh, there's some other options like the OBD 11, which I personally had for a little while. Um, I actually got rid of it. I prefer this a little, uh, more just because the OBD 11 uh, doesn't doesn't really have the greatest interface uh, versus the the Rostec. Um, the interface was lacking and some of the options were confusing so I decided to give this a try. I like it m much better so if you guys are trying to decide between that and the Rostec I would definitely recommend this one just because of the interface and um, the usability. Uh, the community too is much greater for this versus the OBD 11. That's another issue I ran into, so keep that in mind. So I would I would make the uh, make the benefit of grabbing this over the OBD 11 just because uh, of that fact. Uh, you're going to have much more support online. Uh, the guides are going to be veered more towards this. This has been out a lot longer. OBD 11 is a little bit newer, so uh, with that in mind, um, one other thing to consider when purchasing the Ross Tech cable. The version that I have here is the micro can. This is the a uh, little bit older version. Um, they have the hex version too now, which you'll find on their website. The licensing is going to be a little bit more limited. Uh, the $200 version is 200, or I'm sorry, the $200 version is, is going to be for three cars. So you can program your car, um, you can program your buddy's car, and then you can program your wife's car, or your husband's car, whatever. And that's gonna be it. So after that, you're kind of stuck. Um, and the cable is kind of, you know, if you get rid of your car and you get a different car, an Audi, if you have a Volkswagen or vice versa or something like that, um, you're gonna to have to buy another cable. So you might wanna consider getting the $300 version if you're buying it from them, just because that's gonna support 10 cars. If you can find the micro can version like I got, uh, you can still find them on eBay. I'm gonna I'm gonna put some links in the description for you guys. So. You can get these, um, you can obviously get it brand new from Rostec, you can get it on eBay. Uh, the older versions, newer versions you can get there too, but I would just get it from Rostec if you're going that route. Um, but you can get a used version like this on eBay still uh, for around the same price and this is gonna, the microcan is gonna give you an unlimited license. So it's kind of nice just because if you have some buddies, you go to car meets, you can, you can hook them up, program their car. Um, and that brings me to a point. So if you don't have a cable like this or you can't afford two, three hundred dollars, you may want to consider uh, going to some car meets and, and asking some guys uh, if they have this and, and seeing if they can help you out. So a lot of times that'll happen. Most of the time somebody's going to have one. You can, you know, get friendly, talk to people and uh, see if they can hook you up. You know, it doesn't take long. Uh, so with that you're you're gonna find a lot of support online on the Volkswagen forums I'll, I'll put a link down there as well as, as um, all of the uh, programming that I found on the forums so you can you guys can search for that um, you'll of course also need a laptop uh, something basic will work I think their requ the requirements are pretty low so all you need is something like Windows XP uh, maybe Windows 7 these days Windows 10 will work I know there was some confusion around that for a little while with them, but they fully support Windows 10. Uh, you have the v VCDS full program, which is what you're going to use. If you guys are looking for a cheaper solution, again, I did a little bit of research. You can find um, you can find the fake versions of these, not the authentic Rostec, but you can only use the the light version of their software, which is kind of cool that they offer that. But it's going to be much more limited. Uh, you're not going to be able to do a lot of full programming. You can see check engine codes and stuff like that, but that's about it. Um, it's good to, anyways to support the guys who, who develop this and go through all the trouble and, and all that. So I did also find, just so you guys know, on, speaking of eBay, you can actually rent these cables. I, I found a, a guy that's actually renting these out. I want to say for $30, $40, something around there. Of course, you're going to have to put down a deposit. If you want to rent it you know for the full price just in case you don't wind up giving it back but you know you can rent it use it do all your programming and then ship it back and then they'll refund refund your money 
Uh, so that's definitely an option if you're looking for something a little bit uh, of a cheaper route. So you guys could do any of these tweaks um, that I'm showing you, and I'm gonna show you in this video. You don't have to do all of them. You can see which ones you guys like. Uh, again, you're gonna find a lot more on the forums, including the Volkswagen Vortec forums and a bunch of others. So just look around online for that. You know, you can search the VAGCOM um, in that regard, and you'll find a lot of support and a lot of people on there willing to help you out. So if you're also having trouble, you know, you guys can comment. I'll try to help you out or, or um, other people on the on YouTube here, but your best really going to the forums and, and posting there so that you, you guys can get some help there with you know any troubles you're having. So just a real quick disclaimer, uh, while we're gonna do all this, you guys wanna keep in mind that you're doing this at your own risks. I'm not responsible for anything, of course, just throwing that out there because it's gotta be said. So this is the micro can. What we're gonna do, we're gonna hook, um, we're gonna plug it into the OBD port down on your car. You'll find it down right here. Plug it in, you'll see it start flashing like that. Um, and then it's just a USB interface. So we just have a basic laptop here running Windows 10 64 bit. I'm gonna plug it into a USB port and then we'll run up uh, VC DS here. So I'm not gonna go through installation and setup of the software, it's pretty easy. Uh, again, I'll give you guys links to get to the software down in the description so that you can uh, get, it in, get it downloaded and get it installed. They have a pretty good uh, manual that right when you're installing it asks you know how to use it and stuff. So that's pretty cool, but I'll give you guys links so that you can uh, get that set up down there. So the first thing you wanna do is go into the options uh, normally, I have the setup ready, but normally it's going to ask you, uh, it's going to give you a prompt right here that's saying, hey, you don't have anything backed up. Because when you're doing all this, remember your programming, you're going to make tweaks and stuff. So if you mess up, which does happen and is going to happen, uh, you can always go back to the original, say your car is not starting or something crazy, which probably isn't going to happen. But just in case, you know, it's good to have a backup. So oh, I don't remember what I changed. I want to tweak something back. You guys can go back down to the to the options and get back uh, your original settings. So going to options, it's gonna have you test. So you'll hit the test button there. Uh, your USB interface, if you have a different one, um, you can you can use that, but most of them, you're most likely gonna have USB. So we'll hit test there. Everything will give you an okay there. And then you'll hit save. And that's it. So now you're backed up. You have the file on your computer, at least if you want to go back, you have that option there. Also, just so you guys know, while you're doing this, you want to, you do want to make sure you have the um, key in the on position. Uh, not obviously it's started all the way up, but just in the on position. So we're going to start with the windows going up and down that you could do from the remote. So we'll start off by going into select control module. So we'll hit the select button there. Central electronics, which is number nine here. And then we'll hit coding, which is number seven, and then long coding helper. So you're gonna click over to byte six. You kind of have to count them, but it'll tell you in the, the field down here where it says byte zero. You'll just click over until you get to byte six. So there's byte six. And then you're gonna look for bit six, which is down here. So you'll check box, inclination sensor install, or whatever it says there. It might be kind of something relative to what it is. It might be a little bit different. Um, you know, this is all a little bit trial and error, so just keep that in mind, but you'll uh, kind of trust trust people's word for it online, hit that option, and then you just gotta give it a try. So I'm just gonna close out of the box there, hit do it, and then it'll give you a prompt saying coding accepted, you hit okay there, and then you can go ahead and try it out. So the door chime is when, if you guys notice right now, um, I have my door open. There's no, there's no chime going on, which is awesome. So, uh, you know, in the U.S., I don't know if it's if it's different or some type of regulation or law is my guess. But when you have your door open, maybe it's for uh, obviously for safety regulations, something like that. But if your door it keeps dinging, dinging, uh, I find that pretty annoying because I know when my doors are open and closed. Some people, it's probably a benefit. 
might forget that your door's open or you forget your coffee's on the car or you forget your kid in the car, whatever. I don't know, but you know, I'm, I'm going to remember when my doors are open and closed. Uh, and then also on the dash, it's going to show you. So right when you take off and you start driving and you see the miles per hour there or kilometers per hour, whatever, you're going to see if one of the doors open or not. It's not going to ding at you, but you're going to see it pretty quickly. So worst case scenario, you at least have that diagram on your car. Um, so we'll go ahead and get started with that. So what, what we'll have to do with this one is we're going to have to change the, we're actually going to change the country code of your car. So it sounds a little bit scary, but it's not. Uh, I was skeptical at first. I'm like, I don't want to do that. I don't want my car to program that it's in a different country, but all it's doing is it's just setting that your, your speeds, everything is going to be the same, all your codes and everything on the dash. Um, there's a few things that you're going to have to change, which are the time, um, you know, miles per hour, kilometers, and then your time. It's going to be a military time, 24 hour versus AM, PM. So you'll just have to, once we do this, we'll just have to make a few changes in your dash and then you're all set. There's no difference. And trust me, you're going to love that the, the door dinging is gone. So as you can see, that changed my cars and the US version right now. So the door is dinging. I know that's annoying, but we're going to get rid of that in a minute. Um, so what you're going to do is, you, you know, like I said, the car is going to change back. To, you're going to change it to uh, tell it that it's in Germany. So Germany must not have regulation against the chiming, uh, whereas the US does. So you know, we'll get going with that. So we'll go into select control module. We'll go into seven, number 17 instruments. And then under coding, you'll hit that. And then again, long coding helper. And right away, you're gonna see near the bottom of this box where it says country, USA. You'll, you'll just hit that and change it to zero, zero country, which is Germany. Go ahead and close out of that box. Of course, the door dinging stopped because you know, it only does it for so long, but uh, we'll hit do it there. and it'll give you coding accepted. So now we want to go into our dash system and change. Uh, like I said, we're going to want to change the probably kilometers to miles. Maybe if you're in Canada or a different country where kilometers, obviously you can leave that. Um, temperature, again, you know, this is more directed for US. So if you're in a different country, again, you might be using kilometers or Celsius, but in the US, um, we, we know Fahrenheit and miles per hour the best uh, the imperial system. So. We'll go into our options here, our MFI. You'll scroll over to settings and change the time. Uncheck 24 hour mode. And then we'll go back there. And then units, temperature, and we'll change that to Fahrenheit. Go back there and back. And then back over. So now already you can see where miles per hour and Fahrenheit, and it's like nothing ever changed on your car. So it's just changing the country to Germany. Hey, I'm in Germany now, cool. I teleported. And then changing your um, units of measurement, so Fahrenheit and miles per hour over from uh, Celsius and kilometers. And that's it. All right, guys, so the next one is um, your daytime running lights or your DRLs. Depending on what car you have, if you have halogens or the xenons, um, more than likely you're going to have DRLs enabled in your car and they'll be enabled by default normally from the factory. So if you want to be able to turn those off, say you're, you know, you're at the drive-in movies or something like that and you want to, you want to click them off and have your car on, that way, you know, you're not interrupting people and you can still have your car on, your radio on. Or whatever the reason is, you, you'll have that ability to do it right in your settings on your car which in my opinion should have been there in the first place. But again, this is just one of the things that manufacturers don't think consumers should be able to change for whatever reason. Um, DRLs in the US really aren't, aren't obviously required versus in Europe and a lot of places in Europe where they are for safety. Again, I disagree that you know in the US they should be enabled because they help save lives. People can see cars better. People forget to turn on their lights. It's foggy, whatever weather. Um, anyway, so what we'll do is we'll get that option in your MFI in order to enable um, your ability to change it yourself. So we'll start by going into select control module, over to central electronics. 
go to coding and long coding helper. So we're gonna go over to byte 15. So you'll just, like I said, you'll just kind of keep, keep clicking until you get to it. Byte 14, there you go. So now you can see where it says byte 15. And then we're gonna look on the bottom where it says bit seven. And this is kind of telling you what it is too, which is cool. So that's why I like the VCDS software versus OBD11 or some other options out there. This will actually give you a lot of the description um, right up front here. So you can actually look through the set settings in here and see what else you might want to play with. You know, be a little bit careful. Like I said, make sure you have that backup on your computer saved just in case you mess something up. But you know, it'll you can kind of see what um, what kind of changes you can make in here, which is really cool. Um, so we'll go ahead and check bit seven there. Close out of there. Hit do it. And then you'll get a coding accepted. And that's it. So now if we go into our MF5, we'll go over to lights and vision. Uh, and then now you see you have the daytime, day TR light, which is daytime running lights. So you have that option in there now, so you can turn them on and off. Uh, at will, which is really cool. So this next one's really cool. So it's the push to talk, um, the button on your steering wheel that looks like a microphone with some audio going to it. So obviously it's listening for you to talk to your car. If you guys use that feature, awesome. Uh, I don't know anybody that has or does. I've never used it. Um, I can hit my phone. Everybody's got a smartphone now, so you can mount that up here, hit what you need, or use Siri or Hey Google, whatever you, whatever type of phone you have. So. Um, in my opinion, that's pretty useful. So most people like to disable it just because when you're turning and you, you swipe the button, the car starts talking to you like that. Main menu. And then you and then you have to say cancel. Possible commands See? are <laughs> dial number, redial, music, cancel. or further options. You can also say call plus the name of a contact. For example, call She's John so Smith helpful, at right? home. Cancel. See, now you, get to, now you get it to cancel. So pretty annoying in my opinion. Um, instead, you could, instead what we're gonna do is disable it and it's automatically gonna turn this into a mute button, which is awesome. So if you, you know, you get a call, obviously if you're Bluetooth, that'll, that'll mute it for you. But if you wanna mute the audio for whatever reason, that'll do that. So instead of disabling the button completely, now you have a dead button that does nothing. That would kind of suck. So we're gonna turn it into a mute button, which I think is pretty cool. So we'll start off by going into select control module. I will hit steering wheel. Wait for everything to load up. And then coding. And then long coding helper. So now you're gonna click over to byte one. So now I'm in the byte one box. And then where it says bit three, all you guys are gonna do is disable or uncheck that box. Close this box out. Hit do it. and then coding accepted. So now, because I can't play really play music on the radio, um, this will mute, I can't really show you, but uh, yeah, I can't really get, I can't really show you guys because just because of YouTube will we'll take my video down. But um, you know, like I said, th what this will do is it'll just mute your audio and then um, you hit it again and it'll just unmute. So it's a really cool feature I think to have versus some lady that, you know, you can spend 10 minutes with trying to figure out and it won't really do much for you. So the next one we're going to do, guys, is heated seat uh, or heated seat memory, uh, as it's called, or retention, whatever you want to call it. Uh, there's two uh, drivers, heated seat memory, and then there's passengers. So if you're if you have a passenger that rides with you a lot and they want to have the you want to have the memory saved for them as well, you can enable that. But um, my opinion, you know, if my wife's with me or somebody's with me, you know, I'm not going to want that on because 90% of the time I'm driving by myself. Um, so I don't want to have to remember to hit that one off. Personally, I'm always somebody's always going to be driving the car. It's always probably going to be you. So uh, you might want that on. So what we'll do is we'll start off. We'll go into select control module. We'll go into number eight auto HVAC. So your car has an HVAC system just like your house does. We'll go into adaptation. 
And then at the top where it says channel, it'll, it'll look blank here, but you'll just click and there's a drop down and you'll hit retention of driver's heated seat level. It should be the top one there for you. And then it'll say stored value not active. So then what you'll do is you'll just hit new under new value, just change it to active. I'm not sure what active for 10 minutes is, but maybe it remembers for 10 minutes and then cancels the memory. Not really much use in my opinion, but you'll hit active, hit do it. Hit yes. And you, you'll get an error, um, adaptation error. I'm not sure why this comes up, but all you gotta do is hit yes and everything will work fine. So hit yes there. And then it'll say accepted, we'll read it. So it's gonna refresh. And then stored value should read active there for you. We'll go back, close out of there, back. And you're all set. So now when you, now when you guys, you know, like I said, you get in your car, you hit your heated seat on one, two, three level, whatever it is. You go to work, you get done with your eight hour shift, right. you come back in, that heated seat's gonna be there for you. So it's especially nice in the winter when it's real cold out, obviously, and you guys wanna have that uh, that remember for you. So also the passenger, if you've seen in there, there's a passenger option. I don't think it works on some cars, so you might wanna test it out and play with it. Um, feel free as you guys want, uh, see if it works, but you know, turn the car off, take the keys out put it back in and that, that option should still be there. Passenger one might or might not work. I, just, I read online that some people, uh, it was able to work. Verified on 2012s, I believe. Mine's a 2013, um, doesn't work, so you wanna check your version. You know, if you have an SSEL, GLI, GTI, whatever kind of Volkswagen or, or Audi uh, as well you have, um, give that a try. This next one, we're gonna do hill hold control. Um, if you're not familiar what that is, you might not wanna play with it then. It's, it's a safety feature when you're on a hill on an incline or a decline. Uh, what it's gonna do is it's gonna automatically apl apply the brakes for you uh, when you hit off the brakes. That way, especially if you're in a manual transmission, you, you know, you're in, um, you go to shift and if there's somebody behind you, the car will actually wait a few seconds. Um, by default, I think it's like a three, four seconds, something like that, but it'll hit the brake for you and actually hold uh, until you get it into first gear and then you start, you know, releasing the clutch onto the gas. That way you don't roll backwards basically and hit somebody behind you. Uh, same thing moving forward, I guess if you, you know, versus rolling forward on you. So it's a safety feature. I personally didn't like it uh, just because I like to have more control over my car. I don't like it doing things for me because it thinks I'm, it's gonna make me more safe. I kind of know what I'm doing already. So like I said, take it, do this at your guys' own risk, but I personally would take it off. I did on mine. Uh, so how, how we get going on this is we'll go into select control module, ABS brakes. You're going to hear some noises on your dash. Um, you'll see the ABS light and traction control light. If you have that light up, you guys can go ahead and ignore that. So you'll see normal lights and things come up on your dash uh, while you're doing this kind of stuff, which is normal just because it's communicating with it and it's, um, you know, telling it what to do. We'll go into coding and then long coding helper. And you're gonna look for, uh, go all the way over to byte 16. And then you'll see the first one there, bit zero, he'll hold control active installed. So all we're gonna do is uncheck that and close out of there and then hit the do it button and then coding accepted. So there's some other options too. If you guys want to tweak the hill hold, you actually want to have it. You just don't want to have it as long or something like that. You can actually go into adaptation and select it over here, hill hold control in the drop down. Um, mine's going to read an error just because I disabled it completely. It doesn't think it's installed now, um, but this will let you actually change uh, the amounts. If you look on the forums, you'll see the amounts. Um, I believe it's one, one for an early, uh, zero is the stock setting, one is for an early and then two is late. So uh, if you guys want it just a little bit, you know, maybe a second or two, you can do the number one, two, it's gonna stay on for a while until you, you know, you do all your thing. Um, again, I like it disabled completely. I don't want it to hit the brakes on me for any reason, unless I'm in the snow skidding out and I'm about to hit a car, you know, that that's like an emergency situation in my opinion, not just when I'm, you know, gonna roll a little bit down or up a hill, so. But it's totally up to you guys. So that's it guys, um, you know, just a few of them I wanted to show you, some of them that I did in my car. Uh, there's obviously a ton more that you can do. Again, I'm gonna link the description uh, for the 
I'm going to link in the description the uh, places where you guys can find a lot more. You know, do a little bit of research. This stuff's fun if you're into that, you know, this kind of thing. So it takes a little bit of time. But hopefully this video will help you guys get started and, you know, getting this, maybe, maybe making a decision between the, the VCDS, the Ross Tech Tool, or OBD11. Like I said, OBD11 is not bad. Uh, it's like a third of the price, but you have to have an Android phone. Keep that in mind. You can't use an iPhone if you have that. Um, so you'll have to wind up either buying one or buying a tablet. So there's a little bit of extra money already right there. Whether it's you can find something cheap for maybe 20, 30 bucks on eBay, but it's got to be a, OBD11 requires a certain Android version too. So keep that in mind. Um, again, another reason why the Ross Tech is a nice feature. Um, I like the fact that Ross Tech 2 is hardwired in with OBD11. When I was using it, it worked okay, but a lot of times it wouldn't communicate. I have to actually um, communicate over with Paul at ShopDap, which is he's awesome. But, uh, you know, like I said, I wound up getting rid of it just because uh, the, pro the, the interface was clunky and um, you're looking at a small screen on a phone versus a nice software interface that's designed just for this. Um, and also OBD11, like I said, it worked for the most part, but on occasions when I would wait a little while, go plug it in, I would try and try and get it to communicate. It just wouldn't communicate. Even though I had it on the same phone, same account, nothing changed. I put it all in a box, had it in my house, nice and warm, brought it back out, go to plug it in to make a tweak, you know, for something that I noticed I wanted to do, and it wouldn't work. It wouldn't communicate. So keep that in mind. You know, um, take that with a grain of salt. If you wind up getting the OBD11, it's going to take you a little bit more to do these types of tweaks and things. So again, if you're wanting to do this kind of stuff, I would maybe ask around, check a friend. Uh, like I said, go on eBay. You can find some used ones. You can even rent them uh, from people and you know, go to car, car clubs, car meets and stuff. And somebody might actually um, let you use theirs and do some codes for them. So thanks for watching guys. If this video helped you out, please give it a like. I'd appreciate that. If you guys have any comments, need anything, you know, post a uh, comments down in the description. People can help you out. If I can help you out, I will. Um, and uh, yeah, if, you, if you're interested, I'm going to be doing more videos like this with uh, Volkswagen, um, you know, tweaks and uh, going fast. And I got a tune on here. It's a stage two Unitronic with a downpipe. I want to do a, a review on that. So if you guys subscribe, you'll definitely want to catch that. Thanks for watching.